think a lot of fans are wondering, where'd you get that? Yeah. Where'd what? Get what? That ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really thrown off. Uh, the wind's blowing. Can we wait a little bit? Do you remember that uh, Missy Elliott song? Is it worth it? Really it worth it? it. it. Oh. That makes a lot of sense if she really does it. She did. <laughs> what do you think of Cleveland? When I first got here, I was shocked at how nice it is being on the lake with so much to do. A reverse? Oh. George is pumped up. Yeah, he's trying to fire up this Cavalier crowd. It was my first Browns game, and I was like, wow, the fact that you know these fans are this wild and they have struggled for such a long time just tells me oh. enough I need to know about the fan base here. It's been an awesome experience for me. There's, there's the eyebrow. There we go. Who do you think wins in a fist fight, Tim Misney or okay. Papa John? Tim Misney. If you're the brow, it, it looks very scary. Feet are behind the line, though. Don't let me throw you off your game. Beef, right? Oh. I hate that for you. <laughs> All right. Here we are. Are you hot? It's a little toasty out today, so I might it have to. bad. Well, George, welcome. I appreciate it. I know you've had a couple nicknames now, the minivan, G-Wagon. Yep. Welcome to the Jeep. <laughs> it's good to uh, change mobiles, that's for sure. I feel like you have probably told this story a lot, but just a quick on how you got your nicknames and who gave them to you? Um, You know, it was kind of like the, the minivan was kind of self-proclaimed. I don't know if that was a good one to self-proclaim, but I was in Utah and I had a chance to go up and, and dunk the basketball after, you know, not playing for like a half. And uh, let's just say it didn't go as planned. So when I got back to the locker room, you know, Donovan and one of my other teammates, Joe Ingles, was like, what the heck was that? And uh, I was like, listen, you know, I'm not a Ferrari like you guys. I'm more like a minivan. I need a couple laps around the block mm -hmm. before I get to top speed. So that kind of stuck. And then, you know, Darius Garland all of a sudden wanted the, the G-Wagon to stick. So I'm kind of stuck with it. I can't avoid it. It's cute. The G-Wagon. I don't know if cute is the look I'm going for in a, <laughs> in a sports town like Cleveland, but I'll take it. Yeah, what do you think of Cleveland? I mean, you've had the opportunity to play different places. This has to be your favorite, right? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I uh, <laughs> when I first got here, I was shocked at how nice it was. I got here in like August, you know, September. I was shocked at how nice it is, you know, outside of the basketball aspect of, you know, being on the lake with so much to do you know, downtown. And then I really got to experience Cleveland when I went to my first Browns game. And I was like, wow, the fact that, you know, these fans are this wild and they have struggled for such a long time just tells me enough I need to know about the fan base here. And, and it's been an awesome experience for me. I think you're on the good side of the fan base too, because people find you entertaining, your same self that you've always been. Yeah. I feel, oh, by the way, congratulations on your new podcast. Yes, yes, The Bench Sheet. So if anybody wants to subscribe, we're on YouTube, we're on all platforms. So at The Bench Sheet, go give us a follow. It is cool that you have partnered up with Grill Guy. How do you know him? Um, so he's actually up in New York. And when I was in Philadelphia, we got a chance to meet each other through mutual friends. and. Uh, I think he kind of has the same kind of humor that I have. He doesn't take life too seriously. He can laugh at himself. So I think it's a good combination. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you guys knew each other from growing up or something. Yeah. No, I would say uh, we've just recently got to know each other, but our personalities, it's like almost we've been friends for like 10, 12 years. That's cool. So let's learn a little bit more about you, George. Growing up, you played basketball, but you played a lot of other sports too. What yeah. did you get into? Um, you know, I was actually in the wrestling, soccer, football. I played ice hockey for a little bit, but that's kind of the same season as basketball. So I had an experience with, a, you know, one of the coaches telling me I skated funny. So that was kind of it for me. And I stuck to basketball and it's kind of been a, a great marriage ever since. Skated funny. I can confidently say I also skate funny. Yeah, you know, if you don't do it often or do it from a young age, it, it kind of doesn't work out well for you. Have you ever tried roller skating? Um, you know, now that I have have bigger feet, I think it's hard for me to find roller skates that will fit, and I'm not a big person of getting my toes crunched while I'm 
skating over bumps, but roller skating is fun. Why sure. is it something that you take part in on a daily basis? Listen, I bought a pair and then I don't know what I was thinking. I there's there's the eyebrow. There we go. Tim Misney. Tim Misney. Qu quick detour. Yes. Who do you think wins in a fist fight? Tim Misney or okay. Papa John? You know, I've been lucky enough to meet, you know, Papa John. And uh, I know some people would say he gives off like Italian, you know, mob vibes. But uh, I'm going to go with, you know, Tim Misney. You know, that eyebrow, fear the brow. It, it, it looks very scary. So I wouldn't want to mess with him. I feel like he might be all show. Really? Yeah. Like well, he, who are you taking? Are you? I'm taking Papa John in this one, hands down. Are you taking that because he's more of like a... You know, you grew up eating Papa John's pizza and you're being biased, or do you really feel intimidated by the great love in Papa I, John? I might be a biased. I have some Italian in me. That's true. And, uh, you know, so I just feel like we're scrappy. Okay. He's got to have, like, a little, yeah, the mob vibe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just tough. Yeah. Maybe he, won't even play fair, to be honest. Ooh, that gets a little dangerous. That face-off before the fight would be intense. Yeah, like, imagine someone looking at you. Yeah. Like, I've never seen Papa John give off a, an evil look. He's more like a fun-loving welcome into my home. Let's enjoy right. some some good Italian food. Where, yeah. to Misney, that, that look is scary. Well, that's why I think Papa John could kind of, like, throw you a curveball. Because you think he's Mr. Family Guy. Yeah. And then he's ready to throw down. You know, Gab, you bring up some valid points there. <laughs> I wonder how many people what those tickets could sell for. Did you know Caitlin Clark's tickets were selling for, like, five grand? You know, I'm excited. It's too bad we're not going to be in town for it, but the women's final four is going to be in Cleveland. So hopefully, you know, she's in it because uh, what she's done for the women's game is uh, tremendous. She's electric to watch and exciting. And uh, I think what she's given young girls, you know, for the for the aspect of, you know, dream big and anything can happen is tremendous. And I'm super happy for her. I went out. I went to school in the state of Iowa. I went, obviously went to Iowa State, not the University of Iowa. So uh, just seeing her succeed has been really cool. I think it's neat to have male players support the women's game. And you know, on Twitter, you read the comments, people kind of shit on women's oh, sports, Oh yeah. I feel. No, I mean, I think for the, the simple fact that, you know, we speak the same language, like basketball is a game that brings people together. And, you know, when you have someone that can do it at an elite level like that, you always want to show appreciation. But at the same time, we're, talking the same language when we're talking about basketball hoops. There's nothing that really varies between, you know, the men's and women's game. She's a generational talent, and I think we should all appreciate her rather than try and poo-poo, you know, yeah. the women's game. Speaking of poo-poo, uh, <laughs> yeah. what a segue. Yeah. I just feel like people really online can say crazy stuff. What's one of the greatest roasts someone has had on you? For me? See, that's the problem is I try and forget those because it will stay in my head for a while if I really dwell on it. You know, there's been a couple that have talked, body shamed me a little bit. Mm. Those, those are those are pretty funny. That's the most unoriginal. Uh, we will have no body shaming. You can do no wrong in my eyes, George. Thank you. That makes me feel so good. <laughs> Um, no, but there, there's been some real good ones. Like uh, someone said, how about you take the rest of the season off and take a vacation? I'll pay for it. I thought that was that was pretty cool. I'd take them up on it. Hey, but, that's a good know, deal. I'd get fined and probably mm. lose my job. Sure. Your job's a pretty cool one. Do you feel like you envisioned yourself being in this position your whole life, like growing up? Did you think, yeah, this is where I'm going to end up? Um, you know, I think I always had a passion for like playing basketball and I love doing it. Um, but to tell you that I was working every day to be like, I'm going to make it to the NBA, I'd be lying to you. When I was in high school, I just wanted to be on the varsity team. And then when, after I made the varsity team, I was like, I wanted to start. Then it was, I wanted to get a college scholarship, division two, II, division one, whatever it was. And then, um, uh, when I got to college, it was like, I want to be an all American. And then all of a sudden people are like, oh, you have a chance to play in the NBA. And it was kind of like, I never looked too far ahead. I was just looking at the next thing in front of me and. It allowed me to grow and get into this position. And this is year eight for me, and it's kind of been a, a learning experience the whole way. But, you know, I'm, I've enjoyed every step of it. But I wouldn't say that I was just sought out at 13. Obviously, everyone's like, oh, I want to play in the NBA. But for it to be like a realistic goal, I just took it one step at a time. And by the time I was a sophomore or junior in college, that's when I was like, oh, I really could do this. 
Some people can become unfazed by the lifestyle after eight years. Yeah. Do you still wake up and think this is awesome? Um, you know, some days when I'm, uh, I try to not complain and sometimes I will complain. I think about how, you know, I'm playing a game that I once picked up a ball and, and was paying people to play or would go play for free. And now it's my occupation. It's my job. It's the only thing I really have to think about as a, as an occupation. And it, it doesn't even feel like a job. I, I, I feel like a kid and I'm 30 years old. Like I've never really had to grow up. I'm doing something that I love. Um, and I try to avoid, you know, like I said, complaining and pinch myself and be like, this is an unreal life. And, uh, you know, just enjoying it one step of the way, one step at a time, because it is a, a unreal lifestyle. And I wouldn't say I let it consume me, but I definitely enjoy every minute of it. It sounds like you guys enjoy each other too, from a team standpoint, the personalities yeah. seem to gel. Yeah. What is it like in the locker room and just off the court? I think we have such a unique group. Like you talk about, you know, guys like Jared Allen that, you know, fix computers, but are super personable. Then you have a guy like Donovan, Darius, Evan, um, Max, and even guys like Isaac and Dean. Um, and then you toss in a, a, a personality like, you know, Sam Merrill, who's uh, has some pretty good dry humor. Not only is he a good shooter, but he's pretty funny. So I, I think it's cool that, you know, we have so many different personalities and we all gel and get along. And I think even with injuries, you know, throughout this year, we've, you know, managed to win games. And I think that speaks volumes to how close we are in our camaraderie. What's JV Bickerstaff like? He's intense. He's intense. He demands a lot of, a lot out of us and uh, definitely on the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, it's not it's not going to be easy. You know, he, he's realized that, you know, everything is an uphill battle and you got to grind and work every single day. And I, I think that's who he is and that's what he stands for. How about a player who doesn't get enough credit? Ooh, you know, um, you know, I would definitely say, you know, Jared Allen. He, he does so much for this team, whether if it's anchoring our defense or playmaking or, you know, finishing around the rim. I thought he should have been an all-star this year, um, but he definitely deserves his flowers. And I know we don't underappreciate him, but uh, he deserves a lot more than, than what the public eye uh, gives him. How has your game evolved based on the team that you're playing for? Um, you know, I, I think for me, uh, it's evolved in, in many ways. It's allowed, you know, being here has allowed me to create more opportunities off the dribble, driving to the hoop and creating for others, whether that's you know, off the dribble or making extra passes. It's allowed me to grow as a player, not just as a three point shooter, but more or less as a overall player that can help a team win. So we're about to be at Lakewood Park. I forgot to tell you, but I was just hoping you could help me with the three ball, maybe. Okay, I, I think I can give you a couple pointers, a, a couple beef. tips. I mean, yeah. I already got the basics down, so I just elbow, follow through down. You, you're using beef, so clearly yeah, someone yeah. taught you pretty well. Well, somebody went to some basketball camps as a kid, so. There we go. Are yeah. you a righty or a lefty? Uh, I shoot with, well, I righty. What were you going to tell me, you're well, ambidextrous well, no, or no, something? No, 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 Growing up, I always dribbled more with my left, and I remember teams would be like, take away your left, but they didn't realize that you were I shooting with your right. was the right. My favorite, honestly, was to be at the top. Of, of the key? Yeah, kind of fake one way and drive the middle. Okay, you're a get to the middle type of girl, okay. Yeah, throw up a little floater. I like that. I was the shortest kid for the longest time, okay. so I was point guard. Hit a growth spurt. Hit a growth spurt, and then I swear to you, cannot make a layup properly. I have to do it underhand or else it's just, I'm gonna brick it. Wow. Does, that, does that make sense to you? Um, you know, I'm a little lost on that one, but maybe you get the yips when you put here, <laughs> but it's all right. Sometimes that happens with my left hand. I don't use my left hand too much when I do that. Yeah, I'll go with the scoop. Maybe you'll have to watch it. You, you guys have the option to dunk, which is great. Yeah, I don't know like, if you know my game, but I probably have under 10 dunks in my whole basketball career, but I appreciate you saying, I have confidence. There we go. In you. Oh, there's, looks like there's someone that's gonna accompany us out here. Don't worry, I feel like you'll you'll be able to take them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see the right. left go right. A little bit of this. And then go up with my left. I thought you said you couldn't 
Well, it had to be like a I, scoop. I told you. You okay. came here for the three ball. All right, let's see what you let's see what you you're working with, so we can. You said you got the bend, elbow, eyes, follow through. Yeah, this could be a real air ball. Okay. So just watch Should it. I go catch her? Yeah, yeah, the wind is kind of crazy right now, so. Oh! Oh, I got lucky. On your first try, does that mean I have to make it? We could play horse if you want. I'm more of a pig kind of guy. A reverse. Oh. Oh. Feet are behind the line, though. Don't let me throw you off your game. Beef, right? A lot of fans are wondering, where'd you get that? Where'd what? Get what? That ass. <laughs> I'm really thrown off. Oh, the wind's blowing. Can we wait a little bit? Oh. Shoot. I hate that for you. <laughs> I'm in a little shooting slump right now. I don't know if you know, but maybe this will get me out of it. Hey, this is why I came to you. Right. Gab saves the day. You. But here's the game right here. Oh, we're just trying to get your mojo. Back. There we go. Give me some confidence. You guys play so many games. You get you guys read stuff online. Yeah. Let's say you don't have the game or the play that you want. What do you think to bounce back? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just trust in your process. I think everybody has a routine and, you know, embrace the struggles. Water always finds its level. We were brought here for a reason, but uh, I think you dive into your routine even more because as much as people say, you know, you know, let, let it go, obviously it's going to get to you, but I think practicing more kind of gives you the confidence yeah. to be prepared when those moments do happen. And, you never know when that moment is where you're going to have a breakthrough. So just continue to go through your routine and your process every single day and maybe double down on it a little bit. Let's double down on you because I would hate for you to lose. Oh, oh wow. Looks like, um, looks like I'm the winner here. I won the confidence bill. This time. If we were going to horse, I just want you to know. Oh, exactly. if we played longer, I would have won. Okay, well, I got a little humbled out there. Yeah, I, you know, I would say if I stepped into your world and tried to do what you do, I, I probably wouldn't be successful. I don't think that's true because we already know you're great at talking and you've got this big podcast ahead of you, the bench seat, so. Oh, you know, thank you for gassing me up here. I really needed that. On a scale of me to LeBron James, how, popular uh, I would say <laughs> like, like just I'll just you? just right below you there's like <laughs> popular you and then I'm right below you <laughs> no I mean like with social media it's kind of crazy I wish they would have you know before they let you make one they should put a warning sign of like what you're gonna run into and what people post because it's, it's wild to me you know that people you yeah. know, feel this type of way towards other professional athletes but at the same time you know they're allowed to have their opinion and sometimes i fall victim of uh going back at these people online where it should be just something that should be left alone but at the end of the day if everybody was the same this place would be boring so i'm glad we have some some wild people on the internet that keep it interesting yeah i think it's cool that you pick and choose a few people just to chat with just to jaw with yeah to go back and forth i mean i'm a normal human i think that's the thing that kind of makes me unique is I don't think I'm better than anybody else. And What's something you're very grateful for, either this week or more zoomed out in general? Um, you know, I, I definitely don't think you can take for granted, you know, good health. Last night we played the Knicks and Dan Gilbert's son, uh, Nick, was, you know, diagnosed with NF and, you know, the shirt that said, what's not to like? And it just made me realize what's not to like, you know, that kid was going through so much and had a smile on his face, you know, all the time. All the stories you hear about him is he brought so much light to a room. I couldn't imagine going through and he still managed to have so much happiness and brought so many people so much joy. You know, another thing that I'm thankful for within like, you know, a smaller look or this week or today is, uh, definitely being a, a part of the team that I'm on you know I think we get along so well and uh just to be able to go into work and laugh whether if it's win lose or draw and have guys demand the best out of each other I think that's that's the coolest part who's the funniest teammate 
I mean, I can't say myself, so. Uh, I'm sure everyone would say you, George, so besides you. Yeah. Hmm. JA has some, some good, some good humor. Uh, you know, Isaac or Sam Merrill, I would okay. put up there. I think they're pretty funny. If you weren't playing basketball, what would you be doing? Uh, I love to talk. I think you realize that. So I would maybe say something in the entertainment business or real estate, because you know, people that can talk in real estate, they do well for themselves. Real estate, okay. Do you have a dream home or location? You're probably already living there. Um, no, you know, I, I haven't really figured out where I want to be boots on the ground. So take it day by day, enjoying Cleveland, but uh, I'm not sure if I really would want to live in uh, a warm climate all year round. I'm a big four seasons kind of guy. Okay, I understand that. Um, so do you go back to, was it Boston in the off season? Yes, so my family is in Boston and uh, so I make my way back there considering, you know, we're gone and traveling all the time. I really miss out on a lot with my family. So when I get a chance to get back there, I always make sure I do. Are you a big family person? You had I you am know, a your big sister trailing us all yes. day today with Celsius's uh -huh. hula hoops and basketballs. Our family's different. We're a blended family, so I'm sure we, we've grown up with a lot of uh, funky dynamics, if you will. But yeah. but it's crazy. You still end up super close, and uh, she's actually just celebrated seven years clean recently. Oh so wow! It's, it's that's awesome. impressive. You know, it's great because now we're best friends. When for a lot of years there just wasn't a relationship. So right. I, I for gratitude, this is me right now. The fact that she's present and in my life can be a part of this, can be a part of all the fun things yeah. I'm doing. So it's awesome. No, that's that's impressive. Wow. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to make changes. I think um, we take for granted how difficult it is to develop new habits and make great changes in life, even the ones that we know are going to be better for us. Yeah. So I really just clap for anyone who's who's made tough changes. So hard segue here. How about um, we were kind of going with music earlier. Do you have, yeah. What's your favorite kind of music, or do you have a song? Like if you were to have a walk-up song, what would it be? Um, it would definitely be "Country Grammar" by Nelly. I think it's just because that's what I, you know, grew up on. You know, Nelly, Nelly was big and when I was growing up, and that's kind of when I was into baseball and. Shimmy, shimmy, go, 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 listen to it now. I didn't ever think of, oh, pass it to me now. You know, as a kid, like, you don't really know the words. You're just humming and singing, yeah. throwing any word that comes to mind to replace the actual lyrics. Hey, I get it, though. It's got the lyrics. Yeah, you know, I'm going down, down. Hey. Yeah, but uh, I'm actually a big country fan. You know, Luke Holmes, Morgan Wallen, Thomas Rhett, you know, Nate Smith, I've gotten to know um, over the years. Um, Kenny Chesney, wow. Luke Bryan. But yeah, no, I also listen to rap. I listen to everything under the sun. So I feel like I have a d diverse um, palette when it comes to listening to music. Okay, cool. What about you? I'm pretty diverse too. There's this guy on Instagram. His name is I Am Canvas, I think. Okay. He's a DJ who like samples, like he took this gospel song and then put Make It Rain. Make It Rain. Uh, Lil Wayne's. Uh, oh. Um, okay. He does it better than that. <laughs> I was going to say your DJing skills are, they're great, but they're just not up to, is like it DJ Canvas? Yeah, is that, that, that probably really painted a picture. Yeah, um, it painted one that didn't help me see it clearer, but that's all right. We're here. We're going to keep striving. Uh, I wish I could remember. It's like, rain. Me, but like, but then he enters little Wayne, but it's oh, gospel. I make it rain. I make it. Oh, yeah. I make it rain. Uh -huh. But anyway, I'm really into him because he takes these. Like he just did Fairly Odd Parents. He took he uh, he sampled something. Fairly Odd Parents. He does the little clips for social, but then he'll produce them as full length songs, which I love. Yeah, that's a unique talent because you could mix anything, and some of them don't really fit. Yeah. But to be able to make like stuff that wasn't really meant to be together, like Fairly Odd Parents and like another song. Right. That's pretty impressive. Very masterful. I'm really leaning into some of the old school things that Common has too. Common? Yeah. Yeah, he's Me. super underrated na, 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 as a na, lyricist. Na, 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 na. Do you like J. Cole? You know what, I just put one of his songs on my, is it Crooked Teeth? Ooh, Crooked Smile. Crooked 
super close, but we love that you, you know, you try. I'm always singing the wrong words to songs. So I started to just tell people that I'm freestyling. Yeah, and, you know, that's a good way to cover it up. Phil Collins, the song where he's like. Uh, Is that, I can hear it yeah. calling in the air tonight. What does he say right after that? I thought it was, oh, 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 it's hold on. I thought it was, oh, I thought oh, it was Lord. hold on. What is it? I think you're right. Oh, Lord. It's oh, Lord. Yeah. That made sense to you for this whole time. You need to hold open on. up, open up your ears. Definitely. No, no, no. If you listen to it, you'll understand. I'm completely I'm wrong. There's nothing you ever got wrong in a song. No, all the time. Do you remember that Missy Elliott song? Is it worth it? Let me work, work it. it. I put Do my I thing remember? down, flip it in reverse. reverse it. Yeah, right? Yeah. The crazy words I would come up with in to that. Say that and then part. to realize that it was just her oh, saying that line and it was just reversed. reversed. Oh, that makes sense. Wait, how'd you know that it was yeah, Actually, I didn't until you just said, but you said reverse it. And I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense if she reversed it. She did. <laughs> it's your. Uh, yeah. Who's your favorite artist? I don't know. I love Alicia Keys. Oh. Sierra, Mary J. Blige. Wow. I like soul. I like Motown. I'm a big Motown guy. Okay. Did you see uh, Gloria Gaynor, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross, baby? That's my Did favorite. you ever see uh, the Elvis movie or no. documentary? No, I didn't. You should. You should tap in. I'll I'll check it out. Is this the end of the ride? This is the end of the ride. Now we're just gonna throw this Amazon thing on you. We're gonna make a quick surprise. It's a sign for this. Is that yeah, what should I I need uh, someone to sign for this. <laughs> what's up? Oh, what's up, guys? How are you guys doing? I'm just, I'm just dropping you guys off some, some energy. Love the new pod. Great to meet you. Great, Great to meet, meet you. Too, you. George, nice to meet you. Don't she took know. me way out there. It was all right. No, it was all right. <laughs> no, it was cool. I got to get my confidence up, work on my jump shot out of park. Nice. So <laughs> Gab gets credit, you know. Wow, well, I so. nailed it on that Amazon. You test did. Size. This is going to be my. <laughs> this is this is going to be my job if I don't start making threes. <laughs> <laughs> to deliver an Amazon package. <laughs> What's skateboard music? Who sang like Ocean Avenue? There's a place on Ocean, Ocean Avenue. Avenue. And talk to you. We were both 16 and it felt so. Sleeping all day, saying a fall. I think it was someone who drove a yellow Jeep. I just need you to stop me. Oh, like okay. That sounds crazy. <laughs> okay, just, just go for a layup. Shut up, George. 